It is officially 7 o'clock, January 10th, 2019. I'd like to call the meeting to order and I'd like to begin with the Pledge to the Flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I have one addition to the agenda. Um, it is the resolution to accept the standard work day and reporting resolution for elected and appointed officials. Uh, and that will come later in the program. With that addition, uh, can I have a motion to accept the ad agenda? So moved. Made by John Merwin, seconded by Ralph Fidelli. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, do we have any public comments on agenda items only? All right. Uh, Bob, I guess you're up. I have an agreement for the expenditure of highway monies. I'm looking to have section one approved at this time uh, for general repairs, $230,000. To be spent on 34.24 miles of town highways. And later on in the year, I'll be back with section two and we'll see what uh, Mother Nature does to the roads this winter. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. Okay, uh, do I have a motion to? Can I ask a question? Sure. So, so how does this, I mean, I presume this is money that's in the budget. This is budget money. I'm yes. Sure. Why, do we, why do we have to do a special resolution to? It's, it's the law. It's highway law. Uh -huh. I'm, not, I'm not allowed to spend any of this money without this. We have to approve any appropriations that, you know, any right. any monies that are spent. Even so. Though the budget, even though we put yeah, in the budget. Even though it's there. And approved it. It, okay. it, it doesn't. Yeah, we've approved the budget. We haven't necessarily approved each item individually, and we need to as they come along. Okay. And if I spend this money without it being approved, I am personally personally liable for it. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you don't want to spend 230000 of your own money. Thank you. <laughs> uh, can I have a motion then to approve that expenditure? So moved. Made by Ralph Fidelli, seconded by... I'll second By John Merwin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, okay, we are certainly early to begin our, our uh, public hearings, so I'd like to move on to some of the other things. What about other department oh. reports? Lisa, do you happen to have something? I do have something. Very good. My monthly report for December and the dog control officers report is here on the table. Yes. Um, the tax bills have gone out for the 2019 tax season for County County. Those were mailed out today. I'm sure everyone will be um, and I just awaiting want to announce that. that the Harlem Wizards will be at the Weebatuck High School next Wednesday evening. And that's always a fun game. Come check it out. And if you want planning and zoning are on the table, no building. Planning and zoning no are building on the report this yep. month. Are on the table. Uh, anything else as far as uh, committee activities, reports, or anything? If not, when, uh, yep. so for the uh, communications committee, uh, one thing um, Lisa and I were discussing was the possibility of um, having using our town email list and sending out the agenda um, a few days before town board meetings. Sure. Yep. So. so if people want to be added to that list, they should sign up on the town's website at townofnortheastny.gov. Yep. Uh, good thing to be signed up for for any uh, type of uh, announcement that might come along. Uh, okay. Um, we have a received a climate smart uh, grant, uh, which Chris, who has been deeply involved in this, is going to explain to us. Yeah, uh, we 
did receive a letter from the uh, Commissioner of New York State Department of Environmental Conservation announcing that we received a grant. Uh, you may recall that we applied for a grant earlier in the year uh, for three different pieces of the Climate Smart Program. And first, um, this application was done jointly with the village, which has also embarked on the Climate Smart Program. Um, and the three pieces are first to inventory uh, the greenhouse gas emissions that come from village and town buildings, uh, equipment, uh, vehicles, and so on. So this is just to get a baseline of what uh, the very, you know, whether it's light fixtures or the heat or the uh, exhaust from, you know, from trucks and cars, um, what, the, what the greenhouse gas emissions are from those. Uh, the second part of it is a study of the impact of village and town policies on climate, uh, on climate issues. Uh, it may be that there is a regulation or, or a policy somewhere there that, that is, yeah, it goes against sort of good climate planning. Uh, and the third piece of it is a study of all the bridges and culverts that are in the town. Um, this is obviously something that, that we will be retaining a company that does this. It's probably going to be the uh, Harlem, the uh, Housatonic Valley Association, HVA, um, which helped us with the application. Um, and that is a very, that's a very helpful study. Dover has done that. It resulted in a big, uh, you know, three ring binder uh, with a page devoted to each individual culvert or bridge, studying the size of the culvert, the, the date, the history of the culvert, how old it is, what it's made, made out of, uh, and most importantly, its capacity to handle increased water flow if, if there were storms uh, a result, as a result of climate change. Um, anyway, these, these three uh, programs, we applied, f uh, the estimate for the three of them was $59,000. Uh, we, there is a match which the town and village will contribute and which, um, uh, which the HVA will also be part of. Uh, so we had asked for a grant of $29,708 towards the $59,000, and the grant is for the full $29,708. So uh, I'm very happy that, that that grant application was looked on uh, favorably by the state. I might add that both Dover and Amenia also received grants for this, but Ours was bigger, <laughs> and ours was one of the largest in the state. Uh, so um, I think we are looked at as being, you know, uh, a good town to be conducting this. Anyway, I'm very happy that we got the grant, and uh, the next step, you know, there are many steps before this actually starts to roll out, but it'll be over the course of the year. The nice thing about this is that Grants, as you receive them, beget other grants. When you start receiving grants, people take notice, and they see what you're doing. And it, it helps you in going in for other grants for other things as well. So um, I think we should be very feel very fortunate in that recently we have done extremely well with uh, various different grants. And we certainly hope to keep that up in the future. Um, next is, we, we're still a little early here. Um, I have a, uh, uh, can I have a resolution to accept the standard workday and reporting resolution for elected and appointed officials? And you have that in your, your uh, packet of uh, uh, it, it's just a standard thing that has to go into the state annually, um, and we just need to approve it.
Can I have a motion to accept that? So moved. Made by Chris Kennan, seconded by John Second. Midwood. Second? Yeah. <laughs> you just didn't know that you had said <laughs> Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, we also have a, uh, we've been asked to approve a, a request by Blue Sky Fireworks for a fireworks display at 90 East Indies Road on February 23rd. Blue uh, Sky Farm, right? No, it's Blue Sky Fireworks. If you remember, they yeah. had requested earlier yeah. in the fall. Yeah to have a small fireworks display. Yeah. Um, they again would like to have this, have another small fireworks display. I believe the owner of the property likes to have fireworks display for family members' birthdays. Um, I, we, I think we believe we approved one for this same company. We've already done one, yes. Sponsor of the show back in October of last year. Yep. So they're looking to have this on February 23rd, 2019 with a rain date of February 22nd. 2019. Um, can I have a motion to approve that uh, request? So moved. Made by John Midwood, seconded by Chris Kennan. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 I note that the rain date is before the, <laughs> the other date. Yeah. Uh, I think everybody's noted that. I'm, yeah. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to work out, but anyway, we'll leave them. that to them. <laughs> Um, next, I'd like to uh, appoint, uh, we have a new uh, 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 individual for the uh, uh, new secretary to the building department, and that is Patricia Milius, uh, who the, um, uh, the uh, uh, personnel committee uh, interviewed this past week, and uh, uh, we would like to appoint her to that position. Uh, all in favor? Uh, can I have a motion to appoint her? Chris Kennan, made by Chris Kennan, seconded by Ralph Fidelli. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Let's see if we can get. We have uh, the appointment of Clark Patterson Lee as the town engineer firm for general engineering. Um, for specific projects that are related to grants, uh, over, uh, over $39,999, we have to go, uh, we have to put that out for bid. However, in the process of drawing up the engineering uh, scope for any of these projects, we have to have someone who is able to do that. And that is really your, your uh, town engineering firm. Uh, they may, uh, in the process, also be bidding on the other projects that, that you're going out for RFPs on. Um, but we still need a, a town uh, engineering firm. So can I have a motion to Appoint Clark Patterson Lee as the as our town engineering firm. Yes. Question, George, is this this is the same firm, or this is a successor firm from? This the is the firm, firm that uh, in which yes, uh, the, the, our it's previous it, town engineer is now part of this firm. Correct. Yes. Yeah, correct. And this also gives uh, the town engineer, and it gives us access to uh, a great deal many other engineers and, and other prospects within that firm because it is uh, quite a bit larger firm. Um, so it, it should uh, prove to be ben beneficial in that regard as well. Uh, can I have a motion to appoint uh, Clark Patterson Lee as the uh, town engineering firm? So moved. Made by John Merwin, seconded Second. by Ralph Fidelli. All in favor? Aye. 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 It is um, 7.15, and I would like to open the public hearing on the payment in lieu of taxes law, the pilot law. Uh, can I have a motion to open the public meeting? So moved. Made by John Midwood, seconded by Chris Kennan. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, the meeting is, is now open. Do we have uh, any comments, questions uh, uh, concerning the pilot law? Warren, well, I, I have a couple questions. Go ahead. Is, what is this section 120-1? I'm not sure. I can't see what you're pointing oh, okay. at. It's the, it's the, okay. So I have a question mark next to this section 120-1 because we don't have a section 120 in our code. And then the title in the two areas that are outlined in orange pen, the titles are, are different. Yeah, that should be section three. Section three? Instead of 120-1. So we can make that change before Just we Just section three, that's section it. Section three, yeah. Okay, and then, I don't have it in front of me, but um, the one section there, section two, should that say real property tax law? The word law should real be added? Real property tax law. Okay, but then if you look at the title in section two, and then, What's the, do you have the other section there that's in red? The titles are different in both of those. So I just need to know which title is Local supposed law. to be the proper one. The proper one is in section one. The proper title is in section one. Okay, so the other one should be changed to reflect this. One. Okay, if I could just have my work. So the title one. of the law is a local law. I don't know how it is. Local law requiring the owner of a property which includes the solar farm and energy system approved pursuant to the provisions of section 170-73 of the town code to enter into a contract for payments in lieu of taxes. That's the title of the law. Okay. Okay, and so pilot agreement procedures are correct? So that would be, I don't know why this law is wrong. Oh, it's going to be the new Article 5. So Article 5, Chapter 155, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because the next section would be 150 would be 150 Okay, so just change the, the, uh, the title to, to be the same as Section 1. Okay. Okay? Yeah. And take out 120-1, that should okay. be Section 3. And then as far as the pilot agreement procedures, that's correct? The town of Northeast and its assessor upon repeat? I think we agreed. That we, we were changed. We changed that changed at the last that. meeting. To so the it should other. be the town of Northeast and the clerk upon receiving and the notice town of the clerk okay. because the assessor didn't want to be charged with that responsibility. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I have one question. I don't think it will change anything in here, um, and I think I kind of brought it up before, but uh, I, I oftentimes these. Um, solar arrays uh, look to be placed on agricultural areas. If you're, if they are, then that would naturally take them, I would think, out of the agricultural uh, assessment. If the solar array is on a farm, if, if it if it if it does relate to that farm and is for the, the use. Farm is used for that, then I, of it's course, an it's an agricultural right. use. But if, I'm not referring to that. If, it's, if you convert a farm to a, uh, a solar farm um, um, pursuant to our law, and it's no longer a farm, but it's a solar, large-scale solar facility yes. or a solar farm, then it's, they lose their agricultural exemption. They lose that. The pilot, might though. Be, and there might be a rollback, uh, too. Well, that's what I'm asking. The, the, the pilot law, when it applies whatever percentage or however that, that may go in, does that then apply to the new assessment, uh, you know, as not the agricultural assessment? The new assessment. The new assessment, right. whatever that is. That, that's what I assumed the, the would, would be the case. The pilot law basically will negotiate in lieu of it <clears throat> the assessment that would be imposed on the increase in value yep. to the property. The real property remains the same, whatever that value is, 
um, under the assessor's yeah. uh, records. I assume that's what it was. The increase in value for the improvements, the pilot only applies to a payment for that increased value. And the way our law is, is, is drafted is that, that those would be negotiated on a case-by-case -case basis. It can't be more than what they would have paid under the, uh, the regular real property tax law, uh, but, it, but we have full flexibility in negotiating the amount of pilot payment, and that would go directly to the town. We pay to the to the town. And having done this in other towns, normally is that a percentage of uh, how is that normally? Uh, well, we've only we're in the process of negotiating others, but we just completed a negotiation of, of, of one, and to be honest, it was the, it was actually more than what they would have paid under the regular tax law. Um, but uh, we negotiated that based upon the, uh, the output and the, um, we did it on an income basis approach for the, um, uh, instead of doing it on the value of the improvements, the assessor and the um, uh, 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 company uh, negotiated based upon the amount of income that they would, it would be an income method of valuation. So then, under ours, it might end up possibly. It really shouldn't be more. Well, that's. <laughs> I don't want to say. I know. That, that's it what I'm it, it actually should under law. It shouldn't be more. Yes. Let, let's yes. put it that way. Okay. In, in that case, that's it what was. I thought. But the other ones we're negotiating, they're not going to be more. Okay. I mean, they might be some somewhere between seventy-five percent and hundred percent of what they would normally pay. <clears throat> but there are different ways of. Um, um, determine the assessed value of those improvements. One would be the market value of the equipment, uh, which is very difficult, uh, or the, uh, the income approach based upon the, the output of the facility. That's the approach we used in negotiating. And that's but each case might be different. And in our experience, the, uh, the companies come in and are prepared to make a dog and pony show as to which valuation method the town should be using, and then it's up to the assessor. Uh, with input from the town board and, and myself to negotiate a, a number. Okay. So, so if you have a, an agricultural farm, and you're putting some solar arrays and it's still a farm? Correct. If it's only used on site, you can't... Right. If it's, put, if it's just used on site... Yeah, then it's yeah. not the farm. Yeah. That, yeah. yeah. It's only if I turn the whole thing into a solar array... If you convert it from a farm use to a... Um, um, you know, a solar farm facility. The farm work term is not really good to use no. for solar. Uh, the, the industry yeah, doesn't like that, that term, and we're trying to, uh, but it's, it's not really a farm. It's really a, uh, a solar, a large-scale solar facility in which you're generating um, um, uh, solar power and you're selling it back to the grid. So that's why you need a pilot program because if it works, exactly. if you can't tax it, then they're making money. Well, they get an exemption, an automatic exemption on 40, 80, 487 of the real property tax law. And we're allowing the exemption for all other facilities, for the small scale solar facilities, for the private ones. Uh, they'll get the exemption. There's no pilot law. But for the large scale, you know, commercial industrial facilities, we are going to recoup those taxes through a pilot. And I don't know if the school district is, but we, I'm going to look, uh, just take a look at the law about who we have to notify of the, uh, once we adopt the pilot law. And okay. uh, we may have to send a copy to the uh, Dutchess County, but I'll, I'll, I'll double check on that. And I we should send a income? copy to the school district. Would that be in this real property tax law, who I have, who I, have to I'll, notify? I'll check on that, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Uh, but I think we should send a copy to the school district. I don't know if they've adopted a pilot law, but they probably would be well advised to do this. I don't think they have yet. Well, they, they wouldn't adopt the law. They would do it by resolution. Do we have any other questions, comments, uh, relating to the uh, pilot law? If not, uh, can I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Made by John Midwood, seconded by Second. John Merwin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, 
with that, with those corrections that uh, uh, will be made uh, to the pilot law, can I have a motion to uh, accept the pilot law? Pursuant, I prepared a resolution. You don't have to read it. It's law. Okay. <laughs> the only thing I'm changing on the resolution is it says no local law number four of eighteen and. It is not. This will be local law one of 2019. Oh, be, well, that's right. Okay. Of 2019. So moved. Made by John Merwin, seconded by? Second. John Midwood. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 And just send me a, when you re make those revisions, just send it to me to, just so I can double check and make sure that. Yeah, I'll send you the clean copies tomorrow, yeah. and then you can let me know if it's yeah. a good to go to <laughs> send to the anything. state, okay? <laughs> Can I have um, uh, a motion uh, to give me authorization to issue an RFP for engineering services for phase one, a storage facility, uh, as part of the highway garage project? Yes, Chris. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. I thought you had a question. <laughs> um, okay, motion made by uh, Chris Kennan, seconded by? Second. John Midwood, all in favor? Aye. 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 Can I also have uh, authorization to issue an RFP for ambulance services uh, in conjunction with uh, uh, Town of Amenia and Town of Dover? Uh, uh, motion made by Ralph Fidelli, seconded by? Second. John Midwood, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, 12 reads authorization to change the wording. That is not what I'm suggesting. Uh, after going back through this, I think the, the wording in there is correct. Uh, I think that in the, uh, this is in the employee handbook book concerning arriving before or staying after appointed hours. However, uh, I think instead of doing that, we will change procedure. Uh, and that will be that uh, up until this time, uh, actually, this was done back uh, several administrations ago uh, that uh, um, our business manager, in, in the process of doing time cards and in, in the process of uh, uh, doing uh, uh, time and payment uh, to all employees, uh, was asked to change the uh, the punch-in times if it was uh, prior to uh, the uh, appointed times uh, to change it uh, um, to uh, what the, ac the actual uh, time is. What I'm saying is that if you were to punch in at 9 o'clock and you punched in, uh, say, three or four minutes early, uh, then that time would be fixed to the 9 o'clock number. Our, our employee handbook uh, says that that is legal, and it, it is. We have checked this uh, with Association of Towns. I've checked it with Warren. Uh, we have checked it with uh, HR consultants. Uh, this is legal. However, to get I would like to get away from the idea of changing the time cards to uh, reflect a, uh, uh, a 9 o'clock opening. And if someone comes in early and for their own convenience uh, wishes to uh, punch in early, uh, less than 10 minutes early, um, if they uh, punch in, say, three, four minutes early, that's fine. There's not a problem there. Uh, however, their time will begin from 9 o'clock. Uh, any questions on that uh, or any? You might, you might mention that if if they are asked by their supervisor to come in early in order to do to, to work their department on head some, their department yes. head yes uh, to work on some specific project that that would uh, be an exception definitely right? definitely and the department head uh, has the option of being able to change that and and uh, put in for that time um, and that is exactly the way that our employee handbook reads so uh, I'm sorry I didn't mention that um, with that change in mind, that one change in mind, can I have a motion to uh, uh, accept that as, as procedure from here on? 
some I made by John Mark. Yes. You, uh, if, if you are going to, if there is going to be a change, uh, I think it's advisable to advise the employee that you're doing that, so they're made aware of that fact. Okay. Yeah. So if there's some um, dispute as to whether they were authorized to come in early, they have an opportunity to let you let you know that. Yeah. The department head should be the one that's responsible for right. looking at that and, right. and uh, there making any changes within yeah, that. Yes. So if they clock in at 8.55 and the department head authorized that, they'll be paid from 8.55 till the time they leave? If it is not just for a convenience purpose, if they actually have something uh, that requires them to be here at 8.55. Sure, turning the computer on and getting the office ready to be open for a night. That uh, is more a convenience than it is necessarily a need. So then we probably should tell them to clock in at 9 o'clock if the office building And that's fine. At 9 I mean, if they're here a few minutes early and so wish to, wish to punch in then. Okay. Yeah. Put the clock in at that time. But if they're supervisor says, I want you here 10 minutes early because we have to get a project out. Yeah. No, that's that understandable, but I, I yeah. think that should be yeah. noted in a memo to the employees that have to clock in that they are to not clock in until 9 o'clock, if that's... I think that's in the employee handbook. How you want to handle it now? It, it says in there that you you can clock in early at your for convenience, but that your time will begin at the appointed time, which is 9 o'clock. Um, any other questions on that? Comments? Can I have a motion to? Uh, okay. Did we get a, a, pardon me? We didn't second it. Who was the first? I did. Okay. Made by John Merwin, seconded by second. Ralph Fidelli. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Next is the uh, supervisor's report, and we have a budget adjustment. Uh, the first one for January tenth, two thousand nineteen. Um, we have an ex uh, for uh, a fund. We have an expense increase of $2,389, less an expense decrease of $2,119, less a revenue increase of $270. Uh, can I have a motion to accept the, uh, the adjustment? So moved. Made by Ralph Fidelli, seconded by Second. uh, Chris Kennan. All in favor? Uh, we also have a uh, budget adjustment for B fund, uh, which uh, entails a, an expense increase of $726, less an expense decrease of $726, and, an ex and a, uh, uh, a budget adjustment for DB fund uh, with an expense increase of $1,000, less an expense decrease of $1,000. Can I have a motion to accept these? Uh, budget adjustments. So moved. Made by John Merwin, seconded by? Second. John Midwood. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have a special abstract dated December 19th, 2018, totaling $509.23, broken down as A fund, $509.23. Can I have a motion to accept the special abstract? So moved. Made by Ralph Fidelli. Seconded by? Second. Chris Kennan. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have an abstract dated December 31st, 2018, totaling $279,210.15, broken down as follows. A fund, $7,587.75. B fund, 
$2,652.80. DB Fund, $143,969.80. Capital Fund H1, $125,000. Can I have a motion to accept the abstract? Made by Ralph Fidelli, seconded by Chris Kennan. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have an abstract dated January 10, 2019, totaling $35,021.57, broken down as follows. Uh, a fund thirty one thousand eight hundred and forty dollars and twelve cents. B fund six hundred thirty three dollars and eighty four cents. DB fund two thousand four hundred twenty seven dollars and sixty one cents. Water dress district SW one one hundred and twenty dollars. Can I have a motion to accept the abstract? So Made by John Merwin, seconded by Second. John Midwood. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, next month, our two representatives on the... Uh, Ralph Fidelli and... <laughs> no, John Merwin and uh, Chris Kennedy. Pardon me? This is for the expenditure of highway funds. Uh, you let me see. Yeah. Both copies. Yeah. Uh, next are approval of the minutes. Uh, we have um, a special meeting on January 2nd um, in which I noticed a typographical error and that was the only thing that I happened to see in there. Uh, anybody have any other? Uh, Chris called me about Two typos in those minutes, I think. In those? Yeah, and I Okay, uh, well, yeah, then the he noticed. Pertaining, so I fixed that already. Pertaining, uh, that's, that's what I have here. Okay, um, if there are no other uh, corrections to, the, to those minutes, uh, can I have a motion to accept them? Made by Chris Kennan, seconded by second. John Merwin. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next are the joint uh, town board, village board uh, special meeting of December 27th, 2018. I didn't notice anything on there that uh, required correction. Does anybody else have anything? No. Uh, if not, can I have a motion to accept those minutes? Made by John Millwood. So moved. Seconded by... Chris Kennan. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, next is the uh, December 13th uh, regular town board minute and um, uh, town board uh, minutes. Um, I don't believe I noticed anything in here. Did anyone else pick up anything? Uh, can I have a motion to accept the minutes? So moved. Made by John Midwood, seconded by? Second. Ralph Fidelli, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, last but not least, is the um, January 2nd, uh, 2019 reorganizational meeting. 
do we have anybody notice any corrections to that, to those minutes? No, it looked good to me. Looked good to me, too. Um, just going to leaf through here quickly. I, I can't remember. I don't think I picked up anything. Can I have a motion to accept those minutes? So moved. Made by Ralph Fidelli, seconded by? Second. John Midwood, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Warren, do you have anything for us? In um, on that human rights matter, do you want to discuss that briefly in executive session or attorney-client session? I, I think maybe that yeah do you want just to the we can do, we can do is uh, close or finish Pardon? the meeting and then we could go into the general comments okay board. yes um all right uh yeah let let us uh, proceed then with the uh the general comment period do we have any uh any comments from the public yes um, i have something for everybody here for those who don't know me my name is kelly kilmer and i'm a resident of millerton So I'm coming to you tonight because I, uh, myself and one of my coaches have spoken with Supervisor Kay briefly about this. Um, so a few months ago, myself and a couple other residents put together a youth basketball program that's a traveling team. This used to be a program that was funded through the town of Amenia. They covered everything. Kids paid a fee to play. And Weepetuck School let us use their gym and so on and so forth. Um, Amenia has decided not to sponsor the program this year. So I formed a private, comp well, not a company, but just a private organization where we have, with the help of my coaches, we've been able to fund the program through various donations through local merchants here in Millerton. Um, <clears throat> excuse my voice tonight. We also had a very gracious donation by the town, uh, the Northeast Ford Company. They bought all the uniforms for the kids and for kids coming up into the program. These uniforms will be reused for the next three to five years, hopefully. Uh, that was about uh, $1,135 worth of uniforms. Uh, we also had a really gracious donation. Well, not so much a donation, but the village of Mellerton also purchased $650 worth of equipment to get the program up and running for us. So one of the things that I came to you, I'm coming to you tonight with is that we currently have a team of 11 boys. Six of them reside in the town of Northeast. One of them reside in the village of Millerton, two in the villi or town of Amenia, and two in the hamlet of Wasake. Uh, so far we've raised $1,970 in donation. That does not include from Northeast Ford or from the village of Millerton. The children also had to pay a $30 participant fee, which went towards some of the expenses for this program. As I've listed, some of the expenses are the liability insurance policy, which I have to take out in my own name, <coughs> which the reason we have to do that is for liability purposes, and the school will not allow us to use their gym if we do not have a, po a policy in place, which is understandable. They're protecting themselves also. So that, per that cost is about $606 per year. And we use um, Emory and Webb for that. I went right through Paul Zabato for that. Um, we also purchased t-shirts for the kids because in previous years, the kids always paid for their own uniforms, which was a cost of about $75 per kid to participate in this league. So we dropped the cost from $75 per kid to $30 per kid because of the uniform donation. So we bought t-shirts for each one of the kids so that they could have something to remember that they played on this team. Uh, one of the local merchants gave that to us at cost, so it was $10 a t-shirt for the kids. <clears throat> we also have to pay a league fee because we are part of a Northwest Connecticut league. That's how we travel, that's how, that's how we get other teams to play. New York State does not have a travel league like this, so we always go over to Connecticut. We've been doing this for about four years now. Um, and that league fee is $75. And then we have to pay for referees when the referees are, we have home games. Referees right now are running anywhere between 60 to $75 a home game. We have 10 home games out of 12 games this year. So we stacked our, 
we stacked our deck full of home games, uh, thanks to my coach. But it cost us a lot of money to do that too. <laughs> Plus, if we make it to the playoffs, I call it playoffs, I'm not a basketball person. Um, we, if we get uh, the right to play in our gym, then we have to cover referees at that point. The league fee that we pay covers when we go to Hotchkiss to play for championships, um, which that happens, that's happened to our team quite often. We have to, that, that league fee covers all their referees, which are a little bit more expensive. So I'm coming to the town today to ask if there is still some more equipment that we need to keep this pro program going. The village was very gracious and got us everything we needed to get it up and running. Um, we want to keep this program going for other kids. Our goal this year was to have an instructional third and fourth grade team also, which does not, does not travel. The travel team is only for fifth and sixth grade. But there used to be a girls team, there used to be a boys team, there was instructional. We don't have any of that any longer. And in order for these kids to keep moving on through the school, they have to have some kind of base. And we don't have any of that around here right now. So I'm hoping that with help that we've had from the merchants and the village and hopefully from the town that we can really make this program move a little fast, a little bit more and keep it going for like four to five years. My goal is hopefully to have a recreation department take this over at some point in four to five years because I think all of our sports should be under a recreation department. But that's for a whole nother. <laughs> this is just something that we feel that the kids needed. Um, I believe that we would have had more participation this year if I had more time to put this together. I basically had two weeks to do this. The town of Amenia, I went and presented to them in their November 8th, uh, 8th meeting. And nobody got back to me until almost the end of November. And I had to have every, our first game was December 1st. So it was two weeks I had everything, try to put it together. So I think we would have had more participation from children in this area. But again, we're happy to have the kids that we have and we want to keep it going. So as you can see in my letter, we have kind of given an approximate of what we're still looking to get to help move the program along. And we were hoping that we could count on your support since, since we do have six kids that do reside in the town of Northeast. Anybody have any questions? Yes, <clears throat> so what exactly uh, financially are you looking for in the town of Northeast? Well, um, if you wanted to know how much all of these items cost. Yeah, I, I see those things. Mm -hmm. but, Approximately, if you were to offer to pay for all of these items, it would be approximately about between eight to nine hundred dollars. The village did do six fifty, which we were completely happy with, but taken back. We weren't expecting that much, but we were very happy with that. Like I said, it did get us in a really great direction. Um, the one thing that I can tell you is whatever you purchase, we would like to, it would be yours for the next year. Once this season is over, everything would come back to the town of Northeast. We're doing the same thing with the village. The village would then get back all of their equipment that they have purchased. We'd do an inventory, and then next year, we'd come back and ask for that equipment back again, do another inventory, and it would just continue until a rec program took it over. So you're basically looking at a one-time? Yes, this would be a one-time one plea to get this equipment. We're not looking to purchase this every year. What we're looking for would go on for each year moving forward. This would help out the third and fourth grade instructional. This would also help out with the travel. We currently, right now, we do not have, one of the things I put in here were two first aid kits. The reason I put two is one for the third and fourth grade when we start it next year, and then one for the travel league this year. We currently, I just travel with ice packs. That's all I travel with. And anybody that's done sports, you know, there's sometimes there are injuries, and we just don't have anything to travel with at this point. I try myself to bring a couple things that I have, but we'd like to have a, a nice first aid kit. <clears throat> the, if people don't understand what some of this is, like the scrimmage vests are like, 
the pennies. We used to call them pennies when we were in school. Um, that's more for the third and fourth graders so that we can have, they can practice and do a scrimmage. It also helps the fifth and sixth grade when we're practicing with that. Cones, they're just small cones. They learn how to dribble. Same thing with the goggles, the dribble specs. It's all about teaching them the fundamentals of basketball. That's what all these are. What are dribble specs? They're goggles and they have these like lines underneath them so you can't put your head down. You have to put your head up. So like, and reverse. <laughs> yeah, in a way, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's a, that's pretty much what it is. Because a lot of kids when they bounce the ball, again, if they don't learn early, they don't know to keep their head up and they can't pass the ball. So it's all just learning and training. Mm -hmm. I wish I had those in high school. I think I went through one uh, set of glasses per game. So God. And and I think that it's a good program. Um I don't know how many of you follow the Weebatech programs, but we, I don't believe, I have two kids that have graduated, or three kids that have graduated from there, and I have one son that's in 12th grade, who's actually one on the team here. Um, and I don't think in all the years that I've been dealing with my children in Weebatech that we've had three basketball teams for both female and male. This year we do, and I do believe that is part of, because of these programs. My youngest daughter, learned how to play basketball, a sport which she absolutely loves, from this program when the town of Amenia started it. We brought back one of the coaches that has been coaching for three years on this league. We brought her back and I brought a new coach back um, who they've been phenomenal with this group of children. I have like four or five kids on this team right now that have never played basketball and they're doing <coughs> phenomenal. It's a great, it's great for not only for them to learn basketball but for team building and sportsmanship and we're, we're teaching them all of that. These kids leave this this basketball season having friends that they wouldn't have talked to in school. The last, my son, this is my son's third year, the last two years we've gone right to the championship. Last year we were undefeated up into the championship. These coaches are really great with these kids. I don't know the first thing about coaching basketball. I'm just, I'm just the paper pusher in this. <laughs> Any comments? Any? Uh, What's that? What 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 is the uh, the board's pleasure on this? Sounds like a great yeah. program, and I'd I'd love to see the see us uh, support it. Support it. Yeah. I would appreciate that very much. I know I know that there's a basket or a baseball program that's coming up too that somebody else is doing this year because there's not one around here for through any rec committee. So that's my goal. Like I said, is in four to five years to hopefully have a rec committee somewhere, a joint rec committee, so that we can, this is all, and you'll have all the basketball equipment at that point. <laughs> I, I hate to uh, get down to uh, dollars and cents, but is there any, um, um, what uh, is the board's pleasure as far as what they would like to uh, contribute toward this, this? We can't call it a don donation, so. I can tell you where we order all our stuff, and if you guys, or excuse me, if the board or whoever handles all the ordering wanted to order it themselves, we could, I could give you where we order from and where I got these figures from, and it's the cheapest place that I've found so far, and it's where we, we've ordered from and where the village has ordered from. I'm, I'm sure that's probably the case, and we're not going to get it any cheaper <laughs> by trying to do something else. <laughs> could match the village? You're looking for eight to nine hundred. Is that what you're? Well, that's for? exactly how much it would be if we purchased all of this equipment. It's about, if my figures are correct from what I added today, it would be about eight hundred and eighty dollars. If you wanted to cut back a little bit, we could go down to um, six basketballs. The basketballs are fifty dollars a piece. That that that's the minimum that we can purchase. The other ones are not going to be any good, and you're going to be repeating buying. Um, so if we went down to six basketballs, that'll take two hundred dollars off the cost. That would bring it to about six eighty, and that's not with tax. Well, no, we wouldn't be taxed. You wouldn't be taxed, but without shipping, that's without shipping. This is just basic cost. Does that match the village? Well, that, that would uh, the the village was six hundred and the village was six fifty. Six fifty. So same home, right, the same court. So basically, probably with if you if you allowed everything but the except for six balls instead of ten, it would you'd probably be spending in the ballpark around seven, seven twenty because you have to add in the freight. 
would everybody be satisfied with that? I think that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I have a motion to uh, expend that? Make a motion to expend $720? Uh, do I have a second? Chris so, seconds the motion. All in favor? Aye. Uh, aye. Thank you very, very much. And Not at all. Thank you also. Thank you, Kelly. Uh, good. That. Uh, General, okay. We'll have an attorney-client session. Well, let's just uh, well the let's adjourn the meeting, then we can go into attorney-client. Yes. Thing about the pilot programs. Yes. If, if you had a farm, an agricultural farm, it's not an agricultural farm, it's now a, a business, a solar business, why not just tax it? Why not just go back to taxing it like you would tax Because it? New York State law uh, for any uh, solar farms, does not allow you to tax it. That's that's why we're doing this to recoup some of that. Well, that's, a, that's, that's the part of the puzzle. I didn't get. Yeah. It's only a 15-year exemption period. There's a 15-year exemption period. So this is in lieu of the the taxes. We come out about the same. Yeah. Under the pilot. Yep. Okay. Uh, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion made by John Midwood, seconded by Second. Ralph Fidelli. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.